Welcome to this short video that will discuss the solution for the second activity, implementing a bisection variant in the Part A lecture notebook of the fourth module on computational applications for Math 1376. So here what you're asked to do is create a class called the false position uh, class that performs the false position method by following the steps below. So there's these five steps here and it would be helpful probably to actually look at the Wikipedia article on the bisection variant that I provide the link to here. And when you look at it, it basically comes down to this. Instead of the point C being the midpoint of the interval A to B, so that at each uh, iteration, we're not doing the bisection where we use the, the point C as the midpoint, what we do is we just create a line that connects the point F of A to F of B, and we use where the, that line is equal to zero as the root approximation instead of the midpoint. So that's it and you just iterate through it. So it looks like the formula is given by this based on the A and the B values. So you just have to code this up instead of doing the bisection. Instead of taking the midpoint of A and B, this is what replaces that when you're defining C at each one. And the, the subscripts just describe the iteration, but the formula would just use B minus A, uh, or here, I'll, I'll look at this one right here, A times F of B minus B times F of A over F of B minus F of A. That's what you have to code. So it's actually not that complicated of a function uh, or computation that you have to do to get the C value. Now, the way I ask you to do this is copy and paste the bisection class or the bisection improve class from the previous activity below and edit, to, edit its name to false position. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take this previous class. So this is from the previous activity. This was what I called the uh, bisection improve, but it doesn't matter which one you, you copy. I didn't care which one it was. So let's just say I copy and paste this below into this cell. So, okay, this is, <laughs> there we go, bisection improved. And I'm going to change this to false position. That's it, false position. So that's the first thing. I edit its name to false position. The second one, I wanna rename all method attributes that represent that reference bisection with false position. So anywhere where you see bisection, I wanna say false position, I'll just go ahead and copy that and then everywhere where i see a bisection i'm going to say false position i'm going to just keep looking through and saying oh plot bisection plot false position uh here i'd set bisection parameters that would be false position right that's something i already changed up here so you just have to go through kind of carefully and see where is it referencing anything that says bisection again here false position false position and then you'll also see there's code uh comments and documentation um, like doc strings where you also see bisection so it might just say false position if it has that underscore in there it's, I think you know it's fine you know it's better to maybe have a space in there in the code comments but if you don't that's fine but you should definitely change it just anywhere you see bisection change it to false position so that's it let's see anywhere else I don't think I have anywhere else where I'm calling that but that's for you to check oh compute bisection ha 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 compute false position and this is the bisection algorithm. No, no, no. False position. So you just want to go through. There's a few places where you have to change it. So just go through it carefully. You get the idea. That's achieving step two. Um, step three, in the now named compute false position method attribute, edit the single line of code in that method involving involved with computing C with what I just said, what the, what the actual function has to be. So let's look at the compute false position method. So here, right, which is not doing compute bisection, it's compute false position. Um, and this is this is actually not even relevant here because we don't have a standalone function for it. So this would just be a better one. It's just the false position algorithm. And so also the we should have false position parameters, false position, changing these comments, false position. So by the bisection algorithm, the false position algorithm false position algorithm requires a list and b. It has the same setup as requiring, um, as the bisection algorithm, it requires the same things. We're performing the false position algorithm and it's just compute. We don't bisect the interval anymore. We compute the root of the line connecting a f of a with b f of b. That's what the false position does. And instead of it being, um, a current and uh, and B current here. What we're going to do is make this 
this function right here, a times f of b minus b times f of a over f of b minus f of a. So let's just go ahead and code that up. This will be a current times f of b current minus b current times f of a current. All right, so that's the numerator, right? Let's just double check that. a times f of b minus b times f of a a times f of b minus b times f of a divided by f of b minus f of a. Just a, a short, uh, compact formula for the root of this line. That's all it is. And we divide again, let's see, by f of b current minus f of a current. And then here I'm going to make this note a little bit better, where a and b are given by the current estimates. By their current estimates, let's say their current estimates. That's a better code combat. And then we want to check if uh, not, we're not dividing a and b in half anymore, but the new a and b interval is too small to continue. So there we go. So the, everything else stays the same. That's it. I'm just updating some uh, code comments to make it relevant to the false position, but. Basically, that's it. You just have to edit this one single line right here. Just make it for that formula and then make sure that you have false position showing up everywhere. So you should check, even if you're watching me, I'm, I'm doing this kind of fast just to give you the idea of what you need to change in the code. Um, but you should make sure that you have false position showing up everywhere as the name. And then you also want to just be careful with all the details. Step four, in the newly named plotting methods, make sure to edit any code lines that are referring to methods from the bisection algorithm. I think I did that already. But again, in the plot here, I think, right, I have false position, false position, because we're renaming things with false position. So you should go through and just make sure that there's no more bisection notation showing around because we're not bisecting anymore. So make sure you're referring to the false position method. But it's mostly the same functionality. And then in... Um, Step five, I want you to edit some of the code comments and doc strings so that they're reference, reference, referencing, excuse me, the false position algorithm instead of the bisection algorithm. And I've been doing that, but again, go through it with a little bit more fine tooth comb than I'm doing it here in the video. And then you want to make sure that the compute false position method attribute test that the conditions are appropriate for running this algorithm. Okay, in this case, what you're doing um, is you're testing the same thing. Like these tests are fine. This is what you want. It's the same test as the uh, bisection algorithm. So the fact that we're leaving these in here, everything's everything's fine. You might look at any given iteration here um, that you never divide by zero, but that's gonna be the case if we always make sure that these things have different signs. That's setting us up for the secant line approach that shows up later in this notebook. But you don't need to add that here. We're really making sure that everything's going to work in this case because it, it requires the same conditions as bisection. I just wrote this here so that you really think about it and read that the compute false position requires the same thing. Um, again, I highly recommend that you put in useful doc strings and doc test within the class and its method attributes. And if you really want to get fancy, try something else, but I'm not going to skip that in this video. But that's it for that first part. And then the last part of this activity is to just redo the first part of the previous activity where you should just copy and paste basically everything that was there from your first uh, part of the previous activity where you were playing with the bisection algorithm with different functions, except instead of creating instantiations of the false of the bisection um, class, you're just going to copy and paste. You're just going to change the change it for false position. That's all you're going to do. So I'm not going to do that because you just copy and paste and you just change bisection references to false position to make sure that everything runs and that's about it so the next activity has you explore some uh, comparisons between these methods and there's not going to be a solution video for this because you just have to basically create examples and do a little research about which method perhaps can be better in certain scenarios than the other and vice versa and just explain it and show some examples of that so that's it thanks for listening